Okay, as a slight add-on to section 6.3, I'm going to further explain how to do set notation and interval notation for lines that can go on forever in each direction. And also, set notation and interval notation are likely the two that you'll, you'll see the most uh, throughout your math career. So for the first example, I have a line here that goes on in each direction forever and ever. So for set notation, what you're going to do is for domain, you will have all the same type of notation that you had before for set notation. And remember, domain is always in terms of x. And you're going to have x is such that x is an element of all real numbers. That's it. It goes on forever. Range is going to be the same thing, except it's y. And y is an element of all real numbers. For interval notation, a little bit different. For the domain, we're in terms of x here, but remember we only put the, the brackets on and we show what the smallest value and what the highest value would be. So I guess in terms of this case, we would put from negative infinity to infinity. And the range for the same thing, you'd have negative infinity to infinity. And we always use curved brackets on infinity because infinity is never, it's not a value. We don't, we don't reach it. So that's the first type of example, pretty easy, just kind of straightforward showing you that it's all real numbers, but what all real numbers looks like in terms of set notation and interval notation. Remember, for interval notation, you don't really say the x is involved, but you should say the domain is, the range is. For the second one, here I have an endpoint. We'll say that's at negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 on the x and 1, 2, 3 on the y, positive 3. So for set notation for domain, use our curve brackets. x is such that. Now at this time I have a smallest point for x. It's at negative 4. So negative 4 is less than x. And that's it. Or you could write this, if you wanted to, instead of writing that, you could write x is greater than negative 4. Either is correct. It doesn't matter if it's negative 4 or less than x, or x is greater than negative 4. For the range, Similarly, here I have the, the high point for the range, though, which is 3. So I'm going to have 3 is greater than y. Had to think about that one for a second. Because it actually goes down. So an easier way to write that one would actually be y is less than 3. I was trying to think about how I would write it with the number first. So you could probably write it a lot easier y less than 3. I could have written it a lot easier y less than 3. But if you wanted to write the number first, you'd have to write 3 greater than y because 3 is bigger than all the y values because y is going to be everything below 3. So hopefully that makes sense. For interval notation for the range, or for the domain I mean, uh, the domain is going to go from negative 4 all the way up to infinity. Notice that negative 4 is included so I'm going to actually use a square bracket around negative 4, comma. It's going to go all the way to infinity, and infinity is never included. For the range, again, it's going to be from 3. 3 is the top value, though. So 3 is the biggest value, which is included. And this time it's going to go from negative infinity all the way to 3. Range is a bit more difficult when you're looking at a left to right graph because you have to think, oh, it's sloping down, which means it's going to go everything below that top value. So what's my biggest value? What's my smallest value? In this case, my smallest value keeps on going and going for the range. For the domain, my smallest value is right there. It was negative 4. It's a little easier to read. So hopefully that makes sense. Always use curve brackets for infinity. Use square brackets if the value was included. If I had an open bracket, or an open circle, sorry, that was not filled in, then I would use curve brackets around my numbers. Hopefully that helps.